This is Dennis McMahon and welcome to Positively Vermont. And today we are going to be uh, covering a very interesting topic in our state uh, with uh, officers of the Vermont Covered Bridge Society. And we have with us Steve Niamoto, who is the Vice President of the Vermont Covered Bridge Society and its President, Joseph Nelson. Uh, welcome, Steve and Joe, to Positively Vermont. Hi, Dennis. And uh, I just want to ask both of you uh, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you became involved with the area of covered bridges. Uh, Steve, why don't you start? Sure. Um, I uh, got involved with the Covered Bridge Society actually fairly early on. Um, it was in, uh, in response to a uh, small newspaper ad that the group had put out shortly after they formed. Um, they were looking for people to join and um, my wife actually saw the article in the paper and showed it to me. So looked at it and said, okay, well, I'll give that a shot. It's kind of interesting. So that was, I don't know, uh, late 2000, I think, somewhere around there. So been involved, I was away for a number of years, but then came back and uh, been involved since. What made you get involved? What made you interested in the, the subject of covered bridges? Uh, um, I think just being here in Vermont, you know, it's kind of a Vermont symbol. Um, as a kid, I grew up in downstate New York and, you know, there was a barn in our neighborhood. So there was some of this architectural kind of appeal that was interesting. And then, you know, being up here, they're pretty close. There are many of them you can see uh, with a short drive. So just interesting topic. Excellent. Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became involved in the Covered Bridges uh, issue. Well, I was with IBM and I transferred to Vermont. And I covered bridges. Uh, meanwhile, at the time, my hobby was painting. And the idea was to, to, to notice that these bridges were, were really interesting. Well, I began to tour those bridges, the wife and I, taking photographs of them so that I could paint them in my studio at home. And we discovered all that available at the time. Was it really all that great to find those bridges? Some of them you could not find those devils. I got a, uh, an atlas, a Vermont atlas, which was very interesting in that none of the local roads were named. I decided that I'd start my own map. Meanwhile, I got together with a man named Ted Tedford, who was running the Mountain Village in newsletter, newspaper. Um, and uh, I thought, you know, since I'd been buried in the IBM's uh, laboratories and so on all these years, about 1991, I retired, went to Ted. He had uh, uh, I put an ad in the paper uh, to uh, for a reporter for his newspaper. And he took me on and taught me how to write a newsletter, newspaper. And, uh, meanwhile, I was putting together this, this travelogue that Ruth and I were putting together, my wife Ruth. And uh, he saw it and said, hey, why don't you write a book? So I wrote the book. And I gave up the painting thing and stuck to the photography. Okay, so that let me wide open to a character in uh, uh, Bill McComb. Contacted people who have been writing about the covered bridges. That would be that would be Ed. Uh, Tell me, Steve, Ed. Oh, oh, Ed, uh, Ed Barna. Ed Barna, you know, Joe Nelson. 
and invited us to a saloon in Jeffersonville. Yeah. And there he organized us and we started the Covered Bridge Society. And I got into the society because I wrote the bloody book. What's the name of the book, Joe? If you could talk a little louder, we're having some uh, audio problems. Oh. The name of the book. The book. Uh-huh. The last time, okay. Covered Bridges. Anytime, Vermont's Covered Bridges. That's beautiful. Let me ask that you. Is Say again? Let, let me ask you both. Uh, what does the uh, Vermont Covered Bridge Society do now as an organization? I know I'm going to discuss some of uh, these endangered uh, uh, bridges, but if you could just tell us uh, what uh, are the activities of the, uh, the Vermont Covered Bridge Society and what are some of the projects you've been engaged in during the last year or so? Okay, Bill uh, McCone, okay, was uh, anxious about the covered bridge they have in, in uh, Jeffersonville. And it was getting ready to fall down. And that was his, his motive for, for getting us together. Okay, so the purpose of the Vermont Covered Bridge Society then is to promote the preservation of Vermont's covered bridges. Yeah, so, so what uh, uh, a recent activity that took place uh, last year in the town of Belvedere, uh, there's the Morgan Bridge. Some, What's that? Some of, some of the things besides not holding meetings anymore because of COVID-19. Uh, prior to that, uh, we got a call from uh, these authorities in, in Belvedere that the Morgan Bridge was failing, that the, the uh, flooring was going out of it. And they had heard rumors that we made grants for covered bridges. Well, we had made several grants. Uh, fortunately for our, our uh, kitty, uh, the uh, grants were never matched. But this one looked like a, a promising one. So uh, I went to VTrans and uh, checked out uh, Belvedere's budgets and so on. And uh, Ed Caswell of the National Society for the Preservation of Covered Bridges joined us. And we made a grant to uh, Belvedere to repair their bridge for $5,000. And Bill Caswell's outfit matched it. The uh, total cost was 14430 and Belvedere, with their uh, only 300 taxpayers, were able to make up the difference, and the bridge was repaired. Um, Belvedere considered the Morgan Bridge to be key to their residents for getting around, so they were quite anxious to get it done. And I guess we could count that as a success for preserving our covered bridges. That's great. Well, maybe uh, this uh, show goes all over, maybe even other parts of the world. And could you just tell us uh, what what is a covered bridge? How did they develop? And, and uh, what, what is it? Uh, the type of uh, structure is it? Uh, is it wooden? Is it concrete? Whatever. Just give us a little background on covered bridges in general. Well, covered bridges. Covered bridges aren't unusual, say, in Europe, in Germany, and Switzerland. Some of our uh, immigrants came to the uh, what would become the United States. They came along with their expertise. Uh, England, of course, was uh, kind of key, but England had wiped out their forests, and they were using mostly using stone. But they also built cathedrals. And in the New World, wood was pretty cheap. We had a lot of forests. So using wood, they knew about building cathedrals and large buildings. They used the sort of structure in the covered bridges. Starting out with the King Post Bridge. 
получится тоже. Today, uh, our object then is to preserve those trusses and to preserve the trusses. In the old days, they put the truss up, they put a floor between it, okay, and they could pass over this bridge, but they suffered from the weather. They were going to last maybe eight or 10 years. They have to be replaced until someone building a bridge in Pennsylvania put a house over his bridge. And he decided, you know, that it should last at least 50 years. Well, we have a bridge here in Vermont that has lasted like 100. So a covered bridge is a truss with a house on it. <laughs> and the thing that we, uh, the, the way uh, the wear and tear goes on a covered bridge is uh, they replace the floor because say in the winter they put snow in there so sleds can pass through. And they have roofs. The roofs have to be replaced. The siding has to be replaced. And what we're preserving are the trusses. And the enemies of our covered bridges are modern and traffic where we have conveyances a lot heavier than a horse and wagon horse carrying hay wagon. Okay, so they begin to strengthen those bridges. And if we're talking about purity, we wanted to keep those bridges as they were in the beginning, because they were a living function, me functioning mechanism. Okay, so the second enemy then was modernization, where they began to be replaced. Joe, you were saying, and uh, try to speak a little louder, please, because we have all kinds of interference. Yeah. I just had Jim. Yeah. Okay. So the covered bridges have, have uh, uh, lifespans, they have enemies as well. And one of the enemies we consider is the modernization of these bridges. And uh, we also have the, uh, the, uh, the pranksters who like to burn them. What we try to do is set up areas where we have people to work well, with. One. one of the things that I noticed uh, from your materials is that there are several uh, bridges in danger. Uh, maybe, Steve, can you go into uh, some of those bridges, uh, the River Road Bridge in North Troy and uh, uh, sure. various others? Yeah, well, um, unfortunately, River Road Bridge is gone. Um, it's past endangered. <laughs> um, there was a snowmobile fire uh, in February of this year, um, and the bridge was lost, um, unfortunately. So, you know, that does happen from time to time, um, but fortunately, that's, we haven't seen too many of those recently um you know one of the one of the big concerns these days um are oversized trucks um there's reports of drivers just following their gps wherever it tells them to go so um there's a number of cases like in the last within this year say in the last year one big example um happens in linden pretty frequently uh, there's a bridge called miller's run or some people call it bradley um, this poor bridge has been hit uh, according to the notes we have twice this year um, and caused damage both times um, it's it has a history, a long history, unfortunately, of being hit. The interesting thing about that 
is it's all captured on video um, when that happens because I'm not sure if it's a person in the area or who owns the camera, but there's a video camera that is on the bridge all the time. So when these trucks go through, it's captured. And a lot of times the police can uh, catch up with the people. And, you know, these days they are getting fines. Um, insurance covers a lot of the damage, but, you know, the drivers themselves get ticketed. And um, so, you know, that Miller's Run is, is one that's had that issue. Uh, this past summer uh, down in Bennington County, uh, Chiselville Bridge, it's in the town of Sunder Sunderland, um, was hit again by a truck, oversized. And a lot of times these trucks are unmarked, you know, so they have a little trouble, unless wood is hanging off the, the truck from, you know, being hit, it's a little hard to find, but many times they do actually catch up with the people that do it. Um, Fortunately, the Chiselville Bridge has been repaired, and um, that's in good shape again. Um, another one that happened, uh, it happened in uh, Waitsfield, and um, a very large truck actually drove into the bridge and got stuck. They weren't able to go through. So there's pictures of the, of the truck right wedged into the bridge. <laughs> So that was pretty easy to figure out who did that one. <laughs> but, you know, um, it's, it's interesting. There's a, with GPS, the beginnings of GPS, you know, not that old. Um, you would think, okay, this has just happened recently. But uh, I do a, uh, a um, on, the, on our Facebook page, I do a, a feature called This Week Today, This Day in Vermont covered bridge history. So as I've been doing that, putting that together over the last six or seven months, um, it's not necessarily a new phenomenon. <laughs> There's always been larger than uh, sized vehicles that try to go through bridges. It's, it's, it was less frequent, but it's not just something brand new in the last couple of years. Well, I, so, you notice, I notice you, you, you have a Facebook page, you have a, uh, a website, yeah. and uh, yes. we're going to put links to that uh, sure. on the broadcast, and uh, there's a lot of information there. Uh, so you yeah. have that deals with a bridge every day? You have that feature? Yeah, well, well we have a couple of uh, weekly features. Uh, one feature is, like you say, um, we feature uh, twice a week, we feature... The bridges in Vermont because there's approximately a hundred bridges so if you do two a week you can cover the state in a year so you know it's just it's kind of a short little blurb um, a lot of information comes from Joe's book um, that he put together and other sources as well uh, pictures there's a photographer uh, down in Rutland County who's taken some uh, very recent pictures so his his pictures are currently featured. We kind of cycle in and out of photographers over time. So, you know, one person doesn't see it all the time. That reminds me, there's a, 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 an artist named Peter Huntoon who does a, a daily uh, feature, a daily portrait of Vermont. Uh, and, oh, really? Yeah, Peter okay. Huntoon. Uh, a, day in, huh. a Day in Vermont. And that, that's on, on Facebook as well. And I, I think Oh, is it? Yeah, I think sometimes he does uh, uh, covered bridges. Uh, yeah, so yep. I'm going to try to have him on the show in the future. Um, let me ask you this. this: this You said there's over 100 covered bridges now in Vermont that, that, that yeah. are still there. And yes. One of the things that I, I, I mentioned uh, or I saw you mentioned is that uh, there are solutions to this. You know, there are a, a, a great item of transportation, number one, a great item of tourism, a great... Uh, attraction for historians and artists, but you, but you say that in other states they've adopted some special uh, solutions to some of the. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. As as far as uh, 
you know, the, the GPS issue you're talking about. Yeah. 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 That's, um, other states have gone to pretty extreme measures, even in Canada. Um, they put these, uh, steel bars, um, a distance ahead of the, before the bridge, the entrance. And, um, you know, so, so if an oversized vehicle tries to go through, they're going to smash into the iron bars instead of the bridge. Um, you know, in this state, from what I understand, that's not encouraged. Um, uh, I don't have all the reasons or the, you know, all that's behind it, but I know it's, it's not a solution that, that seems practical or feasible here but i know like in georgia there's a bridge um i think it's outside of atlanta i forget the name of it but that bridge has been hit so many times so they've taken some pretty extreme measures to uh to try to protect it um so i don't you have anything else on that joe the, on those bridges well just on the protection itself so the protection of the it seems that Vermont then is afraid of lawsuits. Okay. Someone must be hurt by those those beings. Um, we disagree with that. The only negative on those beings is that uh, it, it makes it difficult to take a picture of the bridge, and that's what our tourists like to do. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they have a setup. It's the uh, Red Oak Bridge in Georgia, where they have uh, the bar on one end of the bridge. But the, a truck can enter the other end. he will come to that bar, then he can't back, he's got to back up through the bridge. <laughs> and some, 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 some solutions seem to, to defeat their own purpose. But, uh, that's uh, that's one of the problems that uh, that we went to the state with, is to try to put up the uh, uh, the signage, you know, to prevent to prevent the uh, trucks from committing themselves to a situation where it's difficult to back away. So uh, this gentleman in um, in Chiselville took it on himself then to post these signs on each end of the of the uh, of the road that approaches the bridge to, to prevent the truck from going onto that road the problem with the state is that they have regulations on signage that would make it too expensive to say for the covered bridge societies to uh, to set up these signs and uh they have regulations too that say if we wanted to augment the signage that they have we are forbidden to use their posts, so we can't share the posts. Uh, I think we gave up on that a few years ago. But there are towns, and okay, and we approach the towns. Now we ask the town now, you set up these signs. You have the wherewithal. And well, the town did. And that would be, I think, I was just for a little just for the heck of it. Uh, where they have sun-powered signs with flashing lights with their pictures in the right places so that traffic does not go onto that road that can't go through the bridge. So they've set a great example. Uh, it's expensive, you know, to keep repairing these bridges. I, I hope they see the light one of these days and begin to do it themselves. Uh, the towns you see own these bridges. There's only a few bridges owned by the state. The rest of them are all owned by the town. Uh, they are backed up by VTrans. VTrans makes their regular inspections. And VTrans also helps these towns then to find funds to repair their bridges. And uh, the VTrans has a uh, covered bridge uh, construction center or section okay that have the expertise okay to uh, to accept the uh, uh, bidders they put out bids on a, on a bridge 
to be repaired. And all of these people that have worked on covered bridges make their bid and VTrans then passes on and accepts the bid that fits the, that fits the, the problem the best. Well, we have a, a number of legislators that watch this show and the, the, the show goes pretty much statewide uh, and also a lot of uh, uh, community organizations uh, uh, tune into this. Uh, tell us what the Vermont Covered Bridge Society needs uh, from the public or from the government uh, or from anyone who's interested in, in the preservation of, of, of covered bridges. Joey, you want to tell us that first? And what we need is some uh, dedicated folks, you know, to fill out the holes that we have in our organization. We have a, a standing committee of, for uh, each of the phases that we think need to be covered. One of them, of course, is the bridge watch thing. We would like to have someone or a group of people in each of the towns have a bridge, okay, to look out for that bridge and make regular reports on it and to work with the town on keeping that bridge up to snuff. Like, for instance, cutting weeds, that sort of thing. Um, actually helping within the bridge and so on. There's a problem there in that there needs to be insurance. And if there are people in that bridge who, uh, uh, that is open to traffic, they also need traffic control, which costs. So what we need then are our agreements then where we can work as a community on each of those bridges, okay, to avoid these problems and uh, obviate the necessity for uh, uh, insurance, that sort of thing. Uh, what we'd like to have is folks you know, keep an eye on the bridge on Halloween. That would help. And of course, uh, uh, to make it untenable, you know, for gangs of young, young men to uh, uh, occupy a bridge, which they do. Mm -hmm. uh, you've seen their, <laughs> their artwork. So, uh, uh, so it's like uh, any other item of public property, people got to keep an eye out and inform the authorities. That's right. So that's what we want to do is link all of these bridges together. Okay, so that we have our, we have our center then we can go to the state, okay, to solve the problem. We train. Okay. Well, of course, um, you, you, you should know that the Vermont Covered Bridge Society has a seat on the uh, uh, Covered Bridge uh, Committee. Run by v and, uh, we, can, we can voice our opinions and we can uh, uh, spread the word about what they're doing, that sort of thing. The only thing we don't have there, of course, is a vote. I got you. Okay, well, we are um, about at the end of, and I, I just want to uh, uh, ask, um, uh, for a, a, a parting message. Uh, uh, we only have a few minutes left uh, from uh, Steve uh, Miyamoto, the uh, vice president, and Joseph Nelson, the president of the Vermont Covered Bridge Society. Why don't you just give us a, uh, a parting shot and uh, urge people uh, how they can help uh, cover bridges and get involved in your project. Uh, uh, so uh, I'm just going to give you that opportunity now. We have our covered bridges now, and we'd like to have them for our posterity. There are great examples of the work that was done in this country when it was all forests and rivers, and uh, we had to, to put together a, 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 a road system, a new bridge system in order to occupy it properly. A man used to carry his corn to a uh, grinding mill on his back or on his mule to put in the bridges so that he doesn't need to do that. The bridges are the very first, our very first uh, section of uh, what we would call the, uh, I need that word. Okay, uh, Steve, please. Right. Sure. Um, I would say, uh, join us. Um, huh? It's it's easy to join the uh, the 
Covered Bridge Society. Um, you can visit our website. There is a membership application that can be filled out. Um, you get uh, a quarterly newsletter with information, um, current uh, news, uh, some features. Um, so that's one way you can get involved. Like Joe says, if you're interested in that, you can join any one of the committees. Um, there's plenty of room. Um, all, you, all you need to do is be willing and commit to helping out. Uh, the cost is very minimal. Um, so the other thing I would say is uh, visit social media that we have as well, which I think you said you'll post the links. But there we have uh, weekly features, we have um, trivia questions, we have um, history features. Um, there's all sorts of different information for people that are interested in bridges currently or uh, some of the bridges that uh, were here years ago that no longer exist. So I would just say join us. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we're sorry we're running out of time, uh, but we're going to follow your progress and, and get you back sometime in the future, maybe in studio and, and discuss some of the endangered bridges uh, you're working on uh, to save. And uh, I want to thank uh, Joseph Nelson, the president, and Steve Miyamoto, the vice president of the Vermont Covered Bridge Society, uh, for a very interesting presentation here on Positively Vermont. This is Dennis McMahon. Thank you for watching.